Texas. There's one. And the Texas rig. It's the first one. Just on a standard Texas rig. We've got a 3 8 ounce tungsten weight, four odd extra wide gap hook, and then just a creature style plastic on there. A little chunk. We've just got a small bit of grass kind of out here on this point, some hard bottom surrounding it. You know, just standard old school Texas rig. We're kind of text posing it. Um, it's not super heavy cover out here, so you could probably get away with without text posing it. Um, and we're just kind of making long casts and dragging it and feather, feathering it through these areas. Um, there's, like I said, some rock and gravel mixed in along with this grass and mid, you know, mid late summer here, a lot of these fish are schooled up offshore, mopping through these schools and trying to, trying to pick off fish here and there with this bait. You know, if they aren't super fired up and eating a crankbait or a swim bait or, you know, more of a moving reaction style bait, this Texas rig can be a really good one to throw in there. Um, if they're kind of more in that negative mood or maybe you've beat up on the school, um, throwing a Texas rig in there can be a, you know, a real good option to, to pick off some more fish if you've located a school that's maybe shut down. There's one. That's a good one. Not a huge one, decent one. Another good Texas rig fish, that one. One thing that I like to do when you're fishing this offshore stuff with a Texas rig, you know, a lot of people peg their weight um, when they're fishing shallow cover. I never peg it when I'm fishing offshore like this. Um, I just feel like I get a little bit better hook set um, into those fish. You don't have to worry about that weight bogging up in there. It gets up out of the way. And it tends to kind of allow your bait to fall a little more free um, compared to just, you know, darting right straight down um, on a long cast like this. You know, if you are flipping offshore grass, you know, real tight quarters, then yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna peg my weight. But when you're making a long cast and you're kind of feathering it through that grass or around some of this offshore rock and gravel, I really like to have uh, a weight that is not pegged. It just um, I like the more natural action that it provides and that weight kind of gets up and out of the way when you're uh, going to set the hook on these fish. Throwing these Texas rigs like we are today, kind of these longer casts and then dragging it or feathering it through the grass. You want a 7 to 7.4, seven you know, medium heavy to heavy type of rod. This is a 7.3 heavy and actually it's a moderate fast but it, it acts kind of like a medium heavy, um, is what I would describe it as. Um, you know, longer seven, seven, four foot rods gonna allow you to really drive that hook when you do get bit. Um, you don't want a real limber rod like crankbait rod or uh, a noodle type of thing. Um, you want something with a good backbone um, that's really gonna allow you to drive that hook in on the hook set. That longer rod allows you to do that a little bit better too versus like a 6.6 or a 6.10. Uh, just picks up more line on that sweeping hook set with these Texas rigs uh, when you're making these longer casts. So um, it's real important if you had a 6.6 or a 6.8 on these long casts, unless that rod was super stiff, you'd have difficulty driving that hook in um, on the hook set. So 7.74 seven, in that medium heavy range is gonna be real good. Um, when you're making these longer casts with this, these Texas rigs. It might have moved on us a little bit. It's a good fish. Got the man bear pig pretty good. Not a huge one, he's a decent one. That wide gap hook way down in there. I prefer a wide gap with these creatures over just a standard worm hook. 
Um, you know, I think it's, honestly, I think the standard round bend worm hook works well. It's just a confidence thing for me. This is just a standard four aught heavy duty wide gap hook and pretty standard Texas rig. You know, I don't think there's, I don't think using a worm hook is the wrong way to go. It's just mess around, see which one works best for you sort of thing and, and go with it. Confidence is a real big deal in fishing. Um, I want, the one I wouldn't use is a straight shank. You know, you really, you're using those straight shank hooks for usually punching mats or flipping shallow wood, that sort of thing, more short line applications. When you're getting out on these longer casts, either a round bend worm hook or a, an extra wide gap is what I would go with. So along with the extra wide gap hook, this is a, there's two different kinds generally. There's a, just a thin wire, regular wire, and then a HD, which stands for heavy duty. So this is a four aught heavy duty wide gap hook. The reason I go with that heavy duty when I'm fishing a Texas rig like this, a little bit heavier line, um, stiffer rod, it's just gonna allow you to get a better hook set without that hook flexing on you. So the last thing you want is when you go to set the hook on a fish, you don't want your hook to flex. And that HD, it's a thicker gauge wire. Um, it's not gonna flex on you nearly as much as a thin wire hook. Um, and part of it's the line that you're using too, along with the rod. This is 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, so a little bit beefier line. Um, the times when I do use those thinner gauge extra wide gaps is pretty rare when I'm throwing like a weightless Senko and I'm Texas rigging it on a spinning rod or I'll throw like a fluke style bait. Those are the times when I'll throw that lighter gauge hook. There's no weight. I'm throwing it on more of a medium action rod um, and lighter line and you can get away with that lighter hook and you're still gonna, you're gonna get the right hook penetration. Um, when you're using these beefier rods and heavier line, you really wanna go up to that heavy duty gauge hook. Um, and it's just gonna allow you to get better hook sets and not have your hook flex on them. Just like that. Not a huge one. But another good one, fun size one. That one was actually out of the side of his mouth. Texas rig, another good chunky bass. Got a nice school here. Just dragging this thing right through them. We got a little bit bigger profile bait. It's all ripped up now, but it's got a lot of appendages on it. Uh, we've got dirtier water here. For midsummer, we've got some algae bloom, so we got a bait that's moving a lot of water for us and it allows those fish to really hone in on it with their lateral line. Um, you could probably catch some fish on a worm down there right now. Um, I just like a bigger profile bait when you've got some dirty water and you've got an aggressive school. Sometimes you can target a little bit bigger fish with a bulkier bait like that.